Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to advise that I'll be sharing my time with the uh, eloquent and brilliant uh, member from Eglinton Lawrence. I'm pleased to stand in the House today to address the topic put forward by the member for Victoria. It's clear that there is no reason to hastily rush into decriminalization, as the members opposite suggest. Over the last decade or so, courts have told us that people with a legitimate medical need have a constitutional right to access marijuana for medical purposes. As a result of various court decisions, there is a robust regulatory system in place that provides legal access to marijuana for medical purposes to Canadians who need it. To be frank, those who want it for recreational purposes can wait until such time as we have a new system that legalizes, strictly regulates and restricts access to marijuana. À l'heure actuelle, nous avons currently we have a system that's fully functional that uh, gives access to medical marijuana to some 53,000 Canadians. Controls over the production and sale of marijuana for medical purposes. These controls protect public health and safety and enable Canadians to access marijuana for medical purposes when authorized by their health care practitioner. Let me make it very clear. Our government does not license organizations such as compassion clubs or dispensaries to possess, produce, or distribute marijuana for medical purposes. These activities by these organizations are and remain illegal. Instead, through the Marijuana for Medical Purposes regulations, Health Canada has put in place controls to enable the production and distribution of marijuana for medical purposes while reducing the risk of marijuana being diverted to an illicit market or use. Santé Canada accord de Health Canada grants permits to producers so that they can produce and distribute dried or fresh marijuana as well as cannabis oil to Canadians who have received the authorization of a health professional. These producers are authorized by Health Canada and they must meet very high standards in terms of producing and distributing marijuana for medical purposes. Help ensure a professional, secure and ethical industry that provides reasonable access to Canadians to marijuana for medical purposes. Licensed producers must demonstrate compliance, including quality control standards, record keeping of all activities and inventories of marijuana, and physical security measures to protect against potential diversion. In addition to those stringent requirements, the system also requires that certain key employees, along with directors and officers in the case of a corporation, have a security clearance. The regulations provide for rigorous oversight to reduce public health, safety and security risks by setting out an in-depth license application review process and a strong compliance and enforcement regime. Licensed producers must meet good production practices, including the requirement for analytical testing for contaminants, sanitation requirements for production and packaging and storage, among other requirements. Licensed producers also have to test marijuana for microbial and chemical contaminants and must meet legislated quality control requirements. Cela signifie que le This means that marijuana that is sold must undergo strict quality controls with a rigorous oversight in order to protect the health and safety of Canadians. That plays a compliance and enforcement role to ensure that licensed producers produce marijuana to the high standards set out in the regulations. To this end, the department conducts frequent inspections of all licensed producer facilities. Up until now, the department has uh, given out 30-some permits to uh, people across the country who are carrying out uh, their activities with strict controls on quality and appropriate health standards in terms of uh, safety and standards that I've already mentioned today. These producers are, se are selling a wide variety of quality controlled marijuana in a manner that reduces risk to public health and safety. 
Moreover, licensed producers are offering marijuana at a range of prices, with some producers offering compassionate pricing. To be able to access marijuana for medical purposes, Canadians must have the support of a health care practitioner. That's a physician in all provinces and territories or a nurse practitioner in those provinces and territories where it is permitted. These health care practitioners complete a medical document that includes the daily amount of marijuana required. With that medical document, individuals can register with one of the licensed producers identified on the Health Canada website. To date, nearly 53,000 Canadians have registered to purchase marijuana for medical purposes. From licensed producers, Canadians can obtain dried or fresh marijuana as well as cannabis oil. De plus, les per Moreover, people who have the right to possess marijuana for medical purposes and who have bought it from licensed producers can also uh, produce derivatives of marijuana for their own personal use. Regulatory requirements, licensed producers must ensure the safe distribution of marijuana. This means that licensed producers are only permitted to, to provide marijuana to registered clients and this marijuana must be securely shipped directly to the client or an individual responsible for the client or to the, client, to the client's health care practitioner. Let me also add that licensed producers may not operate a storefront. Licensed producers must package marijuana in a child-resistant manner that allows the client to determine whether it has been opened prior to receipt and helps to prevent children from opening it. Les producteurs autorisés... Licensed producers must put a label on the container that includes the name of the client, the authorized doctor, the uh, contact information of the producer, and the um, information on the marijuana being sent. To include similar information on a separate document with each shipment of marijuana. These documents are the, these documents are useful should a client be required to demonstra demonstrate proof of authorized possession to law enforcement. Toutes ces exigences. All of these requirements establish a model that remains or that allows Canada to uh, deal with medical marijuana. Mentioned that there are over 53,000 registered clients who are already legally accessing marijuana for medical purposes from 31 licensed producers. These licensed producers have the capacity to absorb new clients. This means that Canadians who require marijuana for medical purposes don't need to go to a dispensary. They can already get it from a legal source if they require it for medical purposes. Le gouvernement travaille. The government is working hard to bring changes to the regulations by uh, concentrating on the, the federal court's uh, decisions. Regulations, they will be crafted to address the issues identified by the court and ensure that authorized individuals have reasonable access to marijuana for medical purposes. In the meantime, I will remind the House that the licensed producers will continue to carry out their activities as they have done and that uh, the Canadians who need medical marijuana will continue to be able to obtain it by going through those licensed producers. It is simply unnecessary to decriminalize marijuana. There is a robust system in place for those who need it for medical purposes. For those who wish to access marijuana for recreational purposes, we would urge them to respect the current laws while we take the time to put in place a responsible, regulated system for marijuana for non-medical purposes. That system will keep marijuana out of the hands of youth and keep criminals from profiting from marijuana's illegal trade. Therefore, I cannot support today's motion. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Victoria. This is attentively to the remarks of the uh, Parliamentary Secretary, uh, Member for Charlottetown. He spoke a lot about medical marijuana. Of course, the purpose of this motion before us today is to ad address the interim measures or preparatory steps the government could take for those 
who wish to use marijuana recreationally, not medically. And I wondered if uh, he would agree with me, Mr. Speaker, that if indeed the latest Statistics Canada information we have says 57,000 people a year are being charged and perhaps in two years' time before the law is put into place, some 50,000 Canadians will acquire a criminal record for this activity, which will be perfectly legal as soon as the government passes and enacts the legislation that they have promised, that a great deal of hardship will occur to that many Canadians in the interim. Well, Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, allow me to take that logic to another situation. Uh, the drinking age in the province of Quebec is 18. So do we say to all of the 17-year-olds in Quebec, look, you're going to be legal next year, so we're going to cut you some slack this year. It makes no sense, nor does this. Uh, the, the idea of decriminalizing in the absence of any other system of control <coughs> will do nothing but enrich organized crime uh, it's certainly not where we want to go, not where we need to go in this country. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I don't agree with the NDP insofar as that there is any ambiguity here. The Liberals said they would change the law, but the Liberals have broken many of their other promises, so we have no reason to assume they'll follow through in this case. For now, marijuana use remains illegal. But I want to ask the Parliamentary Secretary, is he aware of any jurisdiction in the world where legalization has led to reduced use? And if he can't name that jurisdiction, I wonder why he thinks Canada's experience of legalization would be any different. The Honourable Parliament Secretary. Mr. Speaker, what we know is that the war on drugs has been an abject failure. What we know is that uh, cannabis use among young Canadians is the highest in the developed world. So we know that the, that the prohibition system has, has been an utter failure. Uh, we believe uh, that the right answer is evidence-based, and it is strict regulation uh, control. Uh, that is what we're moving towards based on the evidence that we will be amassing through the task force, and that will be a better answer for Canadians. Questions and comments? Question commentaire, the Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Government House Leader. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm wondering if the member could provide a, a comment on this thought, and that is that if this resolution were to, to pass, if the NDP got what they were wanting here, my greatest fear is what we're really saying is to those gangs and those distributors of, of marijuana, can, we'll have that much more of a field day. They can go to our young people and say, hey, look, you can go ahead and you can smoke. It's perfectly legal that, if anything, the biggest benefactor by this motion would, in fact, be organized crime. That the best way to deal with organized crime is to do it through the criminal law, but also to work with the provinces that have the necessary regulations and the framework in place, so that, in fact, the biggest benefactor is not going to be gangs, but rather it will be a good, sound social policy. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Well, Mr. Speaker, I don't know how I can uh, um, answer that question other than to say that I find myself in violent agreement with the uh, member from Winnipeg North. Um, clearly, the, uh, the objective of the government policy with respect to marijuana legalization is exactly that, is to keep it out of the uh, hands of young people and to keep the profits out of the hands of criminals. Um, that, is what, that is the process on which we are embarking through this task force, through the consultation with the provinces and territories who have a shared jurisdiction in, in many of the uh, areas. It will be a, a public health approach and uh, one that will achieve our policy objectives where the old approach, uh, that the approach of prohibition has been an abject failure. Before we go to resuming